This is Matthew Cratter's Bitcoin University, and today I want to talk about the yen carry trade apocalypse, which we're seeing blowing up in real time. But first, a little background. What is quote-unquote carry? It's a technical finance term for how much you get paid or have to pay while you're holding on to a trade. So a trade that has positive carry, you get paid to hold, and a trade that has negative carry, you need to pay something in order to hold on to it. So for example, let's say back in 2012, I took out a margin loan from Interactive Brokers at 1%, that's an annual rate, and I used the proceeds to buy Coca-Cola stock with a dividend yield of 3%. Now, if nothing changes in this trade, I'm paying 1% annually to finance this trade, and I'm receiving 3% annually in dividends. So this trade has a positive carry of 2%, just 3% minus the funding or the financing costs of 1%. Now, 2% positive carry may not seem like much, but now lever it up 10x with your prime broker, like a hedge fund can do, and you're looking at an expected annual return of 20%, which is nothing to sniff at. So that's what's called a positive carry trade, because you get paid to have it on. Of course, there's no guarantee that you'll make money in a trade like this. For example, in the unlevered version of that trade where you're making 2% per year, you're making that spread between 3% and 1%. If Coca-Cola stock tanks 10%, that wipes out 2% of your profits and then another 8%. And so you're actually underwater, even though the trade has a positive carry. And if you're lever 10x and Coca-Cola stock tanks 10%, then you've just lost 100% of your money. So there are definitely risks involved. Other nasty things can also happen. For example, let's say that the Fed raises rates, raises interest rates, forcing interactive brokers to raise their margin rates from 1% to 4%. Now I'm paying interactive brokers 4% annually, and I'm only earning 3% annually. So I'm paying 4% and I'm earning 3%. That means the trade has now gone from being a positive carry trade to a negative carry trade where I'm paying that 1% per year to have the trade on. So at that point, it might make sense to unwind the trade. And notice here that it was the change in central bank interest rates that forced me out of the trade. Here's a dirty little industry secret. Highly levered carry trades are bread and butter for most macro hedge funds. They gamble with your money, and then they collect 2% management fees and 20% of profits for putting something on that's fairly simple like this trade. So what is the yen carry trade that we've been hearing about so much in the news in the last 24 hours? It's quite similar. So if short-term interest rates are at around 5% for the US dollar and short-term interest rates are close to zero for the Japanese yen, then I can borrow in yen, I can pay close to 0% in financing costs, I can sell the yen for US dollars, I can take those US dollars and buy US government bonds, US treasuries, and collect about 5% annually. Now, there are many versions of the yen carry trade. You can do this with the spot. You can do it with futures. You can do it with currency futures on the CME, for example. You could borrow in yen and buy U.S. treasuries. You could borrow in yen and buy U.S. tech stocks. You could buy a structured product that short the yen and long the U.S. dollar. You could buy a structured product that short the yen and long the Australian dollar. This was a very widespread about a decade ago, and it's a very popular a popular trade to have on. The problem with these positive carry trades, like any other trades, they can become inherently unstable if they get very crowded, if everyone is on one side of the boat, like long the US dollar and short the yen, which has been a very profitable trade for a couple of years now. Now, the Bank of Japan, also known as the BOJ, which is the central bank in Japan, when they raise interest rates, even just 25 basis points or a quarter of a percentage point, this can panic everyone who has this carry trade on, especially if they're using lots of leverage in their trade. And so they might decide to size it down or get out of it, get out of it completely. So everyone goes from one side of the boat to the other side of the boat, and it ends up looking like this. So as this chart moves up, that's the dollar strengthening against the yen, which has been a very good trade. And then as the chart moves down, that's the yen strengthening against the dollar, what you might call the reverse carry trade, or everyone unwinding the positive carry trade. And so we've seen the yen massively appreciate against the dollar over the past couple weeks. Now, what happens if you've been borrowing in yen and using the proceeds, for example, to finance something else, like a long U.S. tech stock portfolio, and then the yen strengthens quickly against the dollar? Well, since you're short the yen, you've borrowed in yen, you begin to lose massive amounts of money. And so you decide, or your broker even forces you, if you get a margin call, to unwind the trade. So you sell your QQQs, you sell your U.S. tech stocks, you get 
US dollars in return. You sell those US dollars, you buy yen, and you've completely closed out both legs of the trade. And then in doing so, this helps to spread the contagion. And so you have US tech stocks selling off in the process. And as tech stocks sell off, even people who aren't involved in the carry trades may decide, well, I've taken enough pain. I bought the QQQs at 500 and then now at 450, so I'm gonna get out and take my beating. If you're finding this video helpful so far, I just ask you to help to support the channel. It really helps me with the YouTube algorithm. If you click that subscribe button, if you leave a like, if you leave a comment, question, suggestion for a future video, or if you share this video with a friend or family member that can really help to get my message out. Now, because the entire world is so interconnected and also leveraged, there's a lot of debt in the global financial system. A disruption in one part of the world can have huge ripple effects, a proverbial butterfly causing a hurricane in another part of the world. So for example, again, carry trade unwinds, the QQQs dump, my portfolio dumps, I can't afford to pay my mortgage and I have to sell my house, the real estate market crumbles, the bank's balance sheet crumble, etc. So this is what's known as contagion, and this is what's known as correlations going to one, where almost everything sells off in unison. Japan sneezes, and the whole world catches cold. Though in this case, it could have this could have begun elsewhere. There's no real reason to blame Japan for it. There was nothing special about the, the carry trade. For example, a huge sell-off in U.S. stocks, for example, could cause an unwinding of the end carry trade. So it can, work, it can work in both directions. So it's one thing if this contagion takes place during regular trading hours, but what do you do if you decide to panic over the weekend with everyone else when all the TradFi markets are closed? You dump the only thing that has an open market or you go short it as a hedge. You sell your Bitcoin and you sell your crypto because those are the only markets that you can trade over the weekend. And that's one reason we've seen such a downdraft in Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. So how do you fix this contagion and how do you stop the markets from dumping? Solution number one is really just the free market solution. You just let everything fall until it reaches an equilibrium level. Problems with this approach, though, politically unpopular in an election year. If people aren't making money on their stocks in real estate, then the U.S. government collects yet less in taxes in terms of capital gains taxes and needs to issue even more debt for which the Fed is the buyer of last resort and you end up with even more money printing. That's solution number one. Solution number two, central banks give the patient yet another shot of heroin and money printer goes burr. This is really the circle of life that we've seen so many times and how many innocent cats have been put in the air because of the Lion King. The circle of life goes like this. Central banks print, they cause inflation, then they have to hike rates, then they blow everything up, and then central banks come in to mop up the mess and print even more. This is the story, the cycle that's been repeating again and again and again over the past 50 years. The only real cure for the circle of life or circle of death is a Bitcoin standard. And that's where we're headed. That's basically the guaranteed path that central bank money printing is putting us on because it's destroying all fiat currencies and the only warrior left standing is going to be Bitcoin. Fortunately, you can opt into that standard today and get ahead of the game. You don't need to wait for the end of the world. If you're a Japanese investor holding Bitcoin, we can see here the chart of Bitcoin versus the Japanese yen. It's been an excellent hedge against currency debasement over there. Yes, it is volatile, etc. But we can see here that in terms of yen terms, Bitcoin is still up on this year and it's trading you know very close to all-time highs same for bitcoin denominated in us dollars as well so that's really your choice you can hold bitcoin or you can hold your local fiat currency which is guaranteed to lose purchasing power over time and if you want to learn more about that you can watch my previous video which i'll link to in the description notes below i called it bitcoin forest fires and i summed it up by saying the choice is yours do you want a low volatility asset that's programmed to lose purchasing power forever, like the US dollar or the Japanese yen? Or do you want a high volatility asset that's programmed to gain purchasing power forever, like Bitcoin is? You have to choose one or the other because there's no such thing as a high return investment with low volatility that simply does not exist. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the subscribe and like buttons. Hit the notification bell if you wanna be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks all for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.